Welcome to another episode of ITAP, Automotive Apprenticeship. Today I'm going to take you through the lost art of voltage drop testing. This test helps you identify and locate unwanted circuit resistance that causes a component to operate poorly or not at all. Acceptable voltage drop limits are two tenths of a volt per connection on our supply side, which is usually the positive, and one tenth of a volt per connection on our ground side, which is usually the negative. Now we're going to switch to some actual testing. Okay, what we have here is a parallel circuit. That means we have source voltage, in this case it's 16 volts, available to both of these light bulb or light fixtures here. As you can see, the left light is dim compared to the right side. To keep this short, most dim light complaints are on the ground circuit but it could also be on the supply side or the positive side. First thing we're going to do is get our meter set up to the proper scale and then we're going to hook our black lead to the most negative of our circuit which is going to be the battery in this case and then we're going to hook our red lead to the positive which is going to be the ground at the light fixture that's going to be the most positive of, the, of this circuit that we're testing. We're just trying to test this ground circuit and as you can see on the meter, we're dropping almost 11 volts. The ground circuit is consuming almost 11 volts. And if I have a good ground, my reading should be no more than 0.1 volts or one-tenth of a volt. And that's causing the dim bulb. To confirm my diagnosis, I just supply a good ground. So I'm going to hook a ground wire over here to my good ground. I'm going to take it right over here and touch the screw. And as you can see, the bulb is bright now. Voltage drops are usually caused by dirty, cor corroded, or loose connections. To fix this may be as simple as cleaning a connection. Have you ever disconnected something to test it, and when you reconnected it, it started working? That was probably a, just a uh, bad ground or a bad connection. Just like this right here. When you tampered with that connection, you temporarily fix that voltage drop. Then you need to go in and do a proper repair, whatever that happens to be. Cleaning the connections, putting some dielectric grease on them, or um, replacing a wire that may have too much resistance in it. So that's uh, how we do that test right there. So, after doing this voltage drop test, hopefully you see why we teach Ohm's Law. This is the circuit that we just worked on right here. We have our 16 volt battery right here, with our positive coming out this way, negative going to ground over here. We have our switch right here, and we have our two parallel circuits coming across here with our two bulbs in the circuit going to ground. And you can see on this one uh, up on top here, we have some resistance in here on the ground circuit. And here's where we made our test. We attached our voltmeter right here on the ground circuit. We put our red lead to the most positive, which happened to be the negative of the bulb. We put our black lead over to ground, which was our most negative. And we operated our circuit and we got our reading showing the voltage drop across that ground circuit which was causing that bulb to be dim. After that we took a ground lead and we hooked it to our ground here. We took that ground lead over here and attached it to the bulb bypassing that resistance in the ground circuit and the bulb got bright confirming our diagnosis that we had excessive resistance in that ground circuit. So now I'm going to describe a couple of real-life examples. A few years ago I was teaching a transmission class, automatic transmission class, and I had two Chrysler minivans come into the shop with similar symptoms. Erratic shifts and slipping and just doing strange things. We went through all the tests using a scan tool, using some other electronic testers, we did some pressure testing and one of them we confirmed needed a transmission overhaul. We rebuilt that transmission and it worked fine afterwards. The other one 
while we were doing our testing, especially with our scan tool, we noticed that we were getting some erratic readings from our sensors and some of the information coming out of the computer that, that just didn't look right. We also noticed that our battery cables were really, really dirty on this vehicle. So the next step that we did was we cleaned those battery cables very, very good. We cleaned the cables good, we cleaned the posts on the battery, got that serviced all up, put it all back together, transmission worked perfect afterwards. There was nothing wrong with the transmission on that, but because of the severe voltage drops, because of the corroded connections, the transmission was functioning erratically. So it's just a great example of how that, you know, voltage drops can affect things. Another example I want to give you is uh, from an article I just read from Auto Inc., which is a publication of Automotive Service Association. And it was on a GMC Acadia that came into a shop, and the customer's complaint was they had a left headlight that was dim, and when they were driving and turned on the left turn signal to make a turn, the engine would stall. They brought it into a shop, the technician did a bunch of testing on it, and uh, while he was looking at a wiring diagram to see any kind of commonalities, he found that the left front headlight, the left turn signal, and the fuel pump were all grounded at the same location on the cylinder block, engine block. He went there and looked at it, and sure enough, it looked corroded. He did a voltage drop test and found that there was two volts being dropped across that circuit because of that corrosion. He took that ground connection apart, he wire brushed the block real good, got it good and clean, wire brushed the connector real good, and put new bolts in there, put it all back together, and fixed the problem. So another example of a voltage drop test that helped bring a correct diagnosis into that uh, vehicle. It's really, really important to remember about voltage drops because there's nothing worse than selling a customer a part. It's like a starter, you bring in a car with a slow cranking, you sell them a starter, you put it on, and it doesn't fix the problem. And then you find out that you had excessive resistance in the battery cable. You put a new battery cable on it, fix the problem. So really, really important to remember that voltage drops can help prevent you from making big uh, misdiagnosis. So that's all I've got for today. I want you to have a great day and perform some accurate diagnosis out there. Thank you for watching.